Hello and welcome to Super Smash Brothers League, Season 3, Week 4. I'm Snubby Sam and I'm joined today by... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but... <sighs> okay, so let's get it... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just kidding, I'm here by myself. And let's get into the stats for the week. Um, oh, it seems to have not updated. Let me fix that. There we go. So, at the top of the league, we've got the Beefcakes and Classical Mode Champions at 3-0. and uh, Both of these teams have looked pretty solid. The Beefcakes have looked really scary. They haven't even needed their fifth member in any of the matches we've seen. And uh, at the bottom, we've got the 0-3 teams. Uh, Third Wheels, Mystic, and Excalibur. All those teams... Uh, really looking to get some wins under the belt, or at least some more KOs. Uh, interestingly enough, we're getting two of those teams facing today, so uh, we're guaranteed uh, one 4 team, but otherwise, eh, maybe this could be the week that all those uh, zeros turn to ones. Um, and in the middle, we've got a few teams that have been looking uh, solid in the two ones. We've got Pint Size, Super Bash Sisters, The Athletes, Team Villain and Team Retro. And for the 1 2s, we've got Beast Battalion and Arsenal. Both have had their struggles, but they've looked decent. Uh, so let's just get into this first match. And match one is Team Excalibur versus Classic Mode Champions. So, Team Excalibur seems to have benched Dark Pit. Uh, Classic Mode Champions have benched uh, Yoshi. Uh, interesting. Uh, he's been a pretty good character for them, so interesting that they'd bench him. Uh, something else to note is that Team Excalibur went to Funky's Shack. They turned off Stage Morph. So, we're going to be on Mishima Dojo the whole time, and we're going to get Yodeling in Meadow Hill. Um... I'm not sure how this is uh, going to entirely go. Um, Excalibur definitely benefits from losing uh, the ledges for uh, most of the match, at least, uh, unless the walls break. Uh, but there are characters on Classic Mode Champions who benefit from that kind of stage, too. Captain Falcon, Link. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. Uh, so let's just get into it. Match 1, Team Excalibur versus Classic Mode Champions. So we're starting off here with Roy versus Link. Uh, Roy is running Land Style Gold Mario. Link is running Strategist Style Halberd Golgan. Uh, Land Style is new for Roy, but he's been uh, on Gold Mario. And yeah, I believe Roy's struggled a bit this season, but he's not been too terrible. Uh, cer certainly, we've seen worse from him. Uh, Link opening things up with a pretty quick 22 damage on Roy, but uh, Roy seems to be following back. And Link with, of course, the old reliable uh, of blowing himself up with his old own bombs. So let's check, take a look at these stats, if the page will load. Uh, oh, Link is... no, Roy has burst through the wall. Uh, oh man, Link is just tearing through that gold Mario right now. It's... I mean, he's got some strong damage on him, so it makes sense why he'd be able to uh, overpower it. But anyway, uh, looking at the stats, Roy is at 91 average damage, Link is at 187. So, uh, Roy is definitely the underdog here. And, oh, that didn't take him out. I figured uh, we got the slowdown. Oh, but now we've got ledges. And uh, that could mean, uh, that could spell doom for one of these characters, I think. Uh... Link's got the better down air, uh, which could really mess up Roy's recovery. Oh, Roy counters. Uh, does not follow up on it. Uh, gets a side B up till... He's actually bringing this to a... kind of back against Link. Uh, he's got his final smash on deck. If he connects with this, that's it for Link. But... Oh, okay, he didn't die. He's got his up smash. Is he gonna use his final smash? 
Uh, okay. That was actually a good use of Bob for Link, so... There we go. I did something. <laughs> uh, so here we have uh, Robin, who's running a new build. Strategist style Meloetta and Shedinja. So, uh, instead of Sothis, he's gonna have Meloetta, so he's just gonna be healing throughout. And, uh... Yeah, he hasn't really done too much to Link yet. Okay, Link has his final smash on deck. Oof! And Robin connects that up smash, taking out Link, but using up half of his, uh, half of his Leaven Sword, so you gotta be careful with that. Luigi is in, you know, uh, running Brick Wall style Geese Howard. Eyes uh, kind of more geared to survive to 80, use his final smash. That might not work against a healer like Robin, uh, if, if Luigi is not able to rack on the damage first, at least. Uh, looking at their stats, Robin is at 145 average, uh, Luigi's at 97, kind of the weak link of the team right now. Ooh, the Nosferatu. Nosferatu is always so dangerous, and especially since Robin, like, has that Meloetta now. Uh, like, he's just going to be able to heal so much. And Luigi's got his final smash on deck, Robin does not avoid it, but, uh, that's not gonna kill. Yeah. Uh, still, this is a... Unlike King of Fighters, this stage has pretty close boundaries, uh, relatively speaking. Like, the ceiling on King of Fighters is way, way higher, so... Um, oh, but we're close to the edge now. This might kill if he gets him through the wall. No, I think uh, Robin survives that. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the worry with uh, Luigi with his Geese Howard build. Now he has no build, and Robin is still healing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Robin uh, connects with a uh, Thorin right here. He's got the arc fire, and he's just he's below 20 now. He's below 15. Misses with a Thorin. Luigi being pretty evasive in the air. He's got some nice air mobility on him. Oh, is he trapped? Okay. Uh, good. Fortunately, you can't get trapped outside the walls like that. And the. Luigi just decides he's going to break the walls right away. Not sure that helped him, since he did uh, die right there. And Luigi did, honestly, negative work, because Robin started with 30. So... Uh, that wasn't, really wasn't great for Classic 1 Champions, but Excalibur, uh, the underdogs, have a lead now. Uh, it's worth noting, Classic 1 Champions, 3-0. Excalibur, 0-3. So these are, this is about as far as you can get for this week. And uh, Captain Falcon is running tank style Gold Mario. Uh, he has 98 average damage. Oh, uh, Robin's gonna waste his final smash. Yeah, uh, un unfortunate uh, for Excalibur, but uh, if you're Captain Falcon, you're probably very happy about that because at 64 with this low ceiling, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that kills. Whoops. <laughs> Captain Falcon finally taking out Robin with that forward air. Uh, in comes Ike, uh, running tank style goal against Polar Bear. I believe he was on Halberd uh, for the past few weeks, but clearly that wasn't working out since he's on 53 average damage. And this might kill. Uh, no. Uh, Falcon makes it back. And these are both armor characters, but Ike wins out. Uh, Hayachi reacting to that. Uh, I, he has some sort of grudge against Captain Falcon, I think. But uh, we've got a uh, Sheik in right now, Big B style, and Sothis. Uh, she's one of the uh, stronger Sothis users in the league, I would say, uh, r running uh, 143 average damage. Ike connecting with the counter but missing the hit. Uh, that's always fun. Usually you see that more in Shulk or something. Oof, that up smash! He's really countering a lot. You know that won't do much, right? Like, it scales with Sheik's damage, so... Alright, if you insist. You, all, you also have Polar Bear. Like, what do you need to counter for? Just hit? Just charge a smash attack. Anyway, uh, Sheik is uh, being very evasive, jumping all around uh, Ike. It is kind of what uh, her idea is. That she's got sort of the increased air mobility from Bigby style, and she's already a pretty mobile character. So she'll be able to use that to survive to uh, 100 pretty easily. And she charging the needles. Uh, pretty smart to do, uh, given Ike's speed. He really doesn't have any tools to deal uh, with that. 
And I think it's really fishing for these counters. Honestly, way too much. But um, he, he power shields the needles. And yeah, they just aren't uh, really doing much to each other right now. If I connect to the smash attack, he should be able to take out Sheik before she reaches 100. But I'm not sure he'll get the chance. She's at 96. Will he do it? Nope. Uh, she's down to zero. But, um, I mean, Ike's average has certainly gone up. That's for sure. We'll see if he'll be able to take out Sheik, because uh, that'll, um, if he does, that'll put his team in a good, pretty good position to take their first win. Uh, he connects with that counter, bringing Sheik up to 27. Uh, Ike is uh, already close to 70. Uh, both of these characters are getting closer to their final smash as well, so uh, we'll see who manages to use it first. Uh, Ike's is sort of a closer range thing that's around him, whereas Sheik's is one of the ones that rushes across the stage, and she's pretty good at using it. Oh, they get it at the exact same time, and Sheik misses with hers. Oh, that's going to be so bad, and Ike connects with great ether. Does this kill? No, it doesn't, but um, that is not great for Sheik, uh, taking all that damage. So I think Sheik could be able to put on the chip and take out Ike before, uh, before he takes her out. But um, this is a pretty good... Uh... Oh? No, that doesn't take out Sheik. And, oh, that one's gonna. Yeah, and Ike. I mean, fishing for the counters paid off, I guess. And now we've got uh, Mario running gravity-style Meloetta Majora's Mask, and he's at 121 average damage. Uh, he had a bit of a struggle the first couple weeks, but last week he really picked up, so we'll see if that, uh, see if that sticks around. And Ike is just dishing that damage out. He's already got Mario up to around 70, which, I mean, he started at 40, but still. And... Oh, that's back throw. Yeah. I mean, there was a chance that uh, uh, that Mario would have made a mistake, but in comes Mithra, running progressive style Mill Tank and Tiny Kong. Uh, Mithra has 120, uh, well, Pyra and Mithra have 123 average damage. Um, they haven't been amazing, but you know that there, there's worse. And uh, I, I think you know Excalibur is just trying to get the hang of them. They are very new characters. Uh, the newest character that's on anyone's uh, base roster, for sure. And... Yeah, I mean, Mario is starting to bring this back. Oh, but she connects with that uh, uh, spinning side beat. The up air does not take Mario out, and she quickly gets back to the ground. I mean... Like, the, the mill tank is is letting her get around Mario, get, get her to the ground faster so she doesn't get juggled. But it's not really worth anything if she isn't able to dish the damage out, especially with that healing he's got. Um, yeah, they really just aren't hitting. Uh, Mario charging up Flood. Honestly, Flood could be really dangerous, especially with these walls gone. And the final smash, too. Like, Mar Mario is such a strong edge guarding character that I wouldn't be surprised if he manages to push Pyra and Mithra off and stop them from recovering. Uh, but right now, Mithra is pressuring Mario, keeping him from using his final smash. I think, yeah, I think he's, it's gone. And that is very good uh, news for Excalibur. Well, I mean, not, it's not the best final smash, but you know, it can push you off stage if you're not careful. <laughs> Pyra just uh, doing those little bunny hops around the stage. Oh, the up air. Will this one kill? Yeah, it does. So, Excalibur getting their first win against the 3 0 Classic Mode Champions. Uh, very good for Excalibur. I think you've really found something uh, very good with Ike and uh, Robin. Yeah, Roy was a bit uh, lackluster, but Py and Pyra uh, was kind of slow on the damage dealing, but was pretty consistent at the output. Uh, meanwhile, on Classic Mode Champion side, I think 
I think you're still a good team. Uh, Luigi could use work. I think Brickwall style and Geese Howard. It's a good. It's a good build if you're if you're able to do damage to someone. But against someone who has healing, it just didn't work. And uh, Sheik was fine. Uh, Sheik, I mean, lasted a long time. If she had connected with that final smash on Ike, it probably would have killed him. But yeah, that's all for this match. On to the next match. So match two is Beast Battalion versus Team Retro. Uh, Beast Battalion is one and two. Retro is two and one. But overall, I'd say these teams are really close to each other in a in sort of power. Retro only has eleven KOs, while Beast Battalion has thirteen. They're more or less uh, right next to each other. Um, looking at their benches, it seems like Pichu is benched for Beast Battalion. Retro, uh, they have benched Samus. Uh, sort of interesting picks for them. Uh, Pichu is uh, Beast Battalion's worst character, uh, averaging 80 damage, so not too surprised there. And Samus is the second worst on Retro, averaging 90 damage, so yeah, makes sense more or less. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I feel like we've got a lot of uh, similar sorts of matchups uh, uh, facing off against each other. Uh, sort of in the beginning, uh, in the third spot, and in the closer at least. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see how it goes. I know both of these teams will be uh, very happy to pick up a win against a team that's more or less their equal. I would say because like if if you drop a match here then it's going to be much harder to pick up wins uh, later you know as opposed to like this is a relatively uh, neutral match for both of these teams so uh, we'll see who picks up the win here Beast Battalion versus Team Retro And we're going to be starting off with Incineroar versus Pac-Man. Incineroar is running Forgetful Style, Halberd, Reaper, and Repet. Pac-Man is running Tank Style, Ender Dragon. Both of these are characters who do uh, very well in Up Close and Personal. Pac-Man, perhaps not by design, but by the way uh, Retro has built him, is definitely meant to sort of rush you down, uh, hit you with that, uh, hit with that fire, and then. Uh, you know, connect with some of his more ranged stuff. Uh, Incineroar getting a <laughs> getting a revenge boost off of the fire. That's always scary. Uh, but I think he wasted it. And, oh wait, no, I think he still has it. Yeah, he still has it. He's still glowing. Oh, that's dangerous. Oh, but now he wasted it. <gasps> what? Pac-Man? Pac-Man, your recovery is so good. Why did you do that? Okay, so now uh, we have Pit. Pit is running uh, Forgetful Style Geese Howard, so he's uh, meant to be more of a Final Smash spammer. Hey, hey Pit? Hey Pit? Okay, okay. I don't know what's going on with this stage. Uh, Dracula's Castle kind of got some odd angles on it. Uh, Retro perhaps isn't used. Retro's whole thing is weird stage angles. I don't know what's up, what's up here, but um, oof! And Cinemore connecting with that back throw. Uh, but one more hit, and Pit is going to have access to his final smash, which should take out Incineroar fairly quickly. Uh, the question is, uh, can Incineroar take out Pit before that happens? And can Pit do anything to the second character on the list? Oof. Here comes Lightning Chariot, Incineroar. Not a fast character. <laughs> very slow, and ver has a kind of glowing target on his belly. So... Uh, he's taken out, and in comes King DDD. Uh, not the best. Uh, he's running Demon Style, Azura, Goal again. In comes another Lightning Chariot. This is going to connect. Uh, not going to kill, unless DDD is really stupid. Uh, <laughs> I'm just playing a little hopscotch right there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can't touch me. You can't touch me. <laughs> oh, and there we go. Stage spiking Pit uh, with the untackable into the blast zone. And now we have Peach running a uh, land style gold Mario level 8 AI. Uh, DDD. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. 
J did he survive that? Oh man, that is not good for Retro. But um, yeah, I mean, here comes uh, Simon running Big Beast Battle Polar Bear Balrog. Uh, he's somewhat of an armor character, very tanky. Uh, uh, not particularly fast, but uh, loves uh, to throw out his projectiles, so it doesn't necessarily matter. And DDD is doing um, incredible work so far. Oh, okay. I, I was, uh, it's always a little worrying when someone jumps into the water on that side of the ship. And I'll just sort of get Tetra. Uh, looking at their stats, DDD uh, had a 110 damage before this week, so there you go. And now he's out. Uh, in comes Jigglypuff running Boulder Style Rock Mario Polar Bear. Um, also on level 8 AI. Um, so she's uh, kind of the progenitor of this sort of a sort of a level 8 armor build that Peach uh, took. But now Simon is gone, and in comes Dr. Mario. And this is not looking very good for Retro. Granted, we've seen Dr. Mario come back from worse. But um, it, it's certainly not something Retro wants to rely on. So Dr. Mario is running Boulder Style So This. And... Uh, He's uh, got. He's only got 77 average damage. That's surprisingly low. Um, interesting to see if he'll do uh, better this week. Yeah, maybe get through uh, Jigglypuff and uh, Lucario before getting taken out. Especially since his team's kind of low on KOs, despite uh, having two wins under their belt. Like, I don't think Retro particularly wants another uh, two KO week. So, okay, he does take out Jigglypuff with that up smash. In comes Lucario. A fairly tanky character, Big B-style Piston Hondo Merrick Shedinja. Uh, so he's meant to stick in a long time, build up that aura, and eventually deal a lot of damage. Uh, right now he's at a 93 average damage, which isn't uh, amazing. Could be worse, but, you know, uh, isn't the best. And... Uh, Back on Dracula's castle, Dr. Mario just gets his Sothis activated. He probably wanted it a bit later than that, but, you know, uh, it, it's, it's better than uh, dying before it activates, that's for sure. And he's got Lucario up to around 60%. Now, he's gotta get Lucario out of there quickly, though, because the longer he, uh, the longer he delays, the higher percent he's able to get he gets Lucario up to before he takes him out. Uh, that's just going to be more damage racked up onto him. He's got his final smash on deck. This could kill. If he uses it in the right direction and doesn't miss. He didn't miss. He used it in the right direction. He, he did still didn't kill. But it's the thought that counts. And Lucario, uh, up to around 80%, hasn't done much to Dr. Mario since he got Sothis. Uh, I think Retro is uh, pretty happy that uh, Dr. Mario is managing to dance around Lucario. But this this still isn't even close to an even fight. Um, Lucario could easily just do like a couple Aura Spheres and take out Dr. Mario right here. Uh, Medusa kind of spying on the ma match right now. A little creepy. I think she could pay, maybe pay for a ticket. But oof, and the Dock Stomp, bringing Lucario up to around 100%, but still not dead. Forward air, still not dead. Yeah, and like, I, I'm specifying this because every still not dead is just more danger for Dr. Mario. Uh, Lucario misses with that up smash, but connects with that down air. Oh, no, still not dead. And he's got Dr. Mario up to 50 now. And that's not what Dr. Mario needs against, uh... <gasps> oh! He gets the Dr. Tornado, but falls into the water as he's doing it. I mean... If it, if it was the choice between... Like, getting your team to the... Getting your team to four KOs... And, and uh... Technically... Wait. What? It says four to five. Why does it say four to five? Uh, oh, it's Smash Brothers. Well, 
We'll figure out how that works in the stats. I, I guess they were both killed by stage morph, so it didn't count. But, um... I, I mean, for the purposes of, uh... I, I think for the purposes of the, uh... Stats... Uh, it's just gonna have to count as 5 to 4 instead of 4 to 5. I, I mean, instead of 4 to 3. Because, uh... That's a bit silly. But, um, yeah. Uh, congrats to Beast Battalion, getting up to two wins. Uh, Retro uh, falling to two and two. And, um, yeah, King Dedede looked really solid uh, against Pit and uh, Peach. Um, Pac-Man, good opening, but why'd you do that, man? Why'd you jump off the stage? And why did you not use your recovery, which is good, and goes really far? Um, everyone else is fine. On to the next match. So match three is Team Arsenal versus Super Bash Sisters. Uh, Team Arsenal is 1-2, Super Bash Sisters are 2-1. With that said, Super Bash Sisters, I feel, have had more dominating victories. So I'm, I'd definitely be a bit more scared of them. Uh, even though these teams are pretty close to even. Uh, looking at the benches, Arsenal seems to have benched Falco, while Super Bash Sisters have benched Pikachu. Um, interesting benches. Uh, Falco has been the worst on Arsenal by a lot. He's only at 50 average damage. And on the Super Bash Sisters side, uh, Pikachu has actually been the second best averaging member on Super Bash Sisters, averaging 255 average. I said that, said average a couple too many times, but it's fine, you got it. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see how these do. Uh, something interesting is that both of these teams chose battlefield stages for their home maps, so uh, we'll sort of be spending a lot of time on the same layout. Uh, but on the flip side, we'll, we probably won't see many stage morph kills. Um, hopefully not any, but... Um, it'll be interesting to see how they do. Uh, Arsenal has had a sort of a strategy where they've been swapping out Falco for uh, members of their team every other week, like Rob or Wolf, and I get why they do that. Uh, and uh, Super Bash just has more, more uh, been keeping it even. I think this is the second time Pikachu has been benched, but. Uh, Otherwise, it's sort of more sort of a mixed around. So yeah, let's just get into the match. Team Arsenal versus Super Bash Sisters. So we're going to be starting off with King K. Rool versus Byleth. King K. Rool is running Forgetful Style, Meloetta, and Shedinja. Bialith is running Tank Style, Azura, and Tractor Trailer. Um, so, King K. Rool uh, at 131 average damage, second highest on Arsenal. Uh, Bialith is at uh, 145. Uh, kind of s somehow lower, lower of the pack for, uh, for Super Bash Sisters. Um, Tractor Trailer is an interesting spirit we don't see much. If Literally ever, I don't think. But, um... Uh, what, what it does is it essentially lets you, um... It, it increases your traction, so... Uh, some character... I mean, every character slides after they stop running. Uh, some characters slide a lot, like Luigi. And I guess uh, Super Bash just decided that... Uh, Violet's uh, sliding after her runs was uh, making her miss attacks. So they're hoping Tractor Trailer helps with that. Um, she does seem to be connecting with a lot of dash attacks, so maybe that was the issue before. Or she just wouldn't connect with those, but... I mean, we'll see how it goes. She's got uh, K. Roll up to about 90%, but he did start with 30. And she's got... She's all, all the way up to over 100. Yeah, um, K. Roll is uh, doing pretty well against one of the uh, scarier members of the league. <laughs> Oof. And uh, that forward air... Oh! The berry to dash attack is... 
He sniped her with the funny ball! The funny blunderbuss, and... and now we have Palatina running. Uh, Big B style beat Soren Reaper and Repet. Uh, Palatina has been uh, 217 average damage, so uh, pretty good, I would say. And Carol connects with this final smash. This might kill, actually. Uh, right here at the ledge, this might kill. Uh, blows up DK Island with Palatina inside, but she does not die. She survives. And uh, interesting, interesting build for her. She's sort of got a. Uh, uh, beat for her aerials, Soren for her smash attacks, and a couple other moves that do magic type damage. Oh, she spikes. The, uh, does she spike in your or did he just accidentally grab the wrong ledge? I'm not sure. But now we're here on Mario Bros. Uh, Battlefield form. Uh, we've got Wolf here, Demon Style Majora's Mask, Great Fairy. Uh, Wolf is a. Uh, Pretty solid, he's at 112 average damage. Uh, this sort of great fairy build is uh, something I think Parada Plant ran a lot last season. Uh, where you use Majora's Mask, you start with a handicap, but once you get to 100, you go back down to 50. And you've got uh, such a solid boost to your stats that it's just, uh, in general, pretty good. And he's got Palutena up to 132. Uh, that's not great for her. She ideally wants to survive so she can use her final smash. Uh, down throw to missed auto reticle to connected auto reticle. That's a true combo's boys. The, that's what we in the business like to call a true combo. <laughs> missed auto reticle, missed up smash, connected up air. And she's got her final smash on deck. Black hole, mega laser. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, but he healed. Yeah, it doesn't kill because of the heal, but at least she did activate his great fairy. So that's one less thing to worry about. Okay. I mean, right now, okay, Wolf has taken out Palutena, and Wolf has taken the, uh, uh got, got, a Team Arsenal to a pretty solid lead. In comes Alex running Boulder-style Gold Mario. So Wolf has, with his final smash on deck, Wolf Pack, uh, not gonna kill unless he does something really funny with it. But, um, which I don't expect. <gasps> He, he tried. He did something really funny with it. I cannot deny that. He did what I asked. I, I, just not in the way I expected. But there you go. And Wendy takes out Wolf. But Team Arsenal still a full stock in the lead. And uh, Mega Man running strategist style Ho-Oh Phantom Thieves of Heart. So I'm meant to sort of be a more air mobile character who does well with his specials. Uh, Wendy, strategist style, Halberd, Quickman, so also a special move character, but uh, more defensive. And, um, uh, uh, looking at the average damage, uh, Mega Man's at 106. Uh, pretty solid, pretty solid. Uh, Wendy is at 57, so kind of a, uh, kind of the worst member of Super Bash Sisters right now, actually. And we'll see if, uh, I think this build has changed from last week. Uh, she normally doesn't have strategy style. Uh, so hopefully this helps her improve. Uh, but on the flip side, if you're Arsenal, I mean, this is, this is your chance to get a win against a pretty powerful team. Uh, you only have one win so far. It would be nice to get a little further out of the gutter, especially if uh, some of those, I mean, Excalibur already won. Uh, you know another 3 team's going to win because they're facing each other. So, um, uh, Arsenal would really like to pick up this win here. And Mega Man taken out before he can use his final smash. Uh, Wendy has mostly even this up, but in comes Diddy Kong, one of the... I, I mean, just sort of a ticking time bomb of a character, if you will. Uh, Boulder-style Geese Howard. So basically, so long as he lives to 80, he's gonna get a kill. Honestly, it doesn't matter what percent his opponent's at. Uh, so long as he has those two final smashes on deck, he's gonna get that kill. And his average damage, uh, 108, not amazing, but he does get uh, one KO per match, which is always a really solid place for a character to be. 
Uh, Wendy doing really well at keeping Diddy Kong at bay, though. Um, they transition back to uh, the Mario Bros. stage, and she uses her final smash. Um, or, I'm not sure if that's going to help. Yeah, it didn't do much damage to Diddy Kong, but it's better than nothing. And he's at 80%. So I think it's only a matter of time, but she did pretty well. She did 86 to Diddy Kong. She did solid damage to Mega Man. I mean, she took Mega Man on her own. So, you know, I think her average is going up this week. And now we've got Isahel. Uh, is she... Oh, wow, what? Just, just... Just Slingshot? That's it? Wow. And now we've got a... Uh, I mean, that's that was not great for Arsenal. They wanted that second final smash so they could get free damage on Isabel. And now we've got Rob. So Isabel's running Demon Style Meloetta. Oh, that's why. Oh, she's on Demon Style now. That's why. That's why she killed so quickly. Um... And, and uh, Rob is running Big B-style Gold Mario. Unfortunately, Gold Mario, I wouldn't be so happy about against Isabel. It's going to counter her down B, but it's not going to counter her side B. Uh, Isabel, of course, uh, best member of uh, Super Bash Sisters right now. And also second highest ranked member of the league. Uh, Rob is uh, 168 average damage, respectable. But I'm not sure he's taking this. Uh, oh, wow, that was a good gyro hit. That's the thing about Demon Style. Uh, is that gyro gonna... <laughs> oh, you know, if you throw up a gyro into the air in Act 1, it's gotta, it's gotta land on a bomb in Act 3. And uh, both of these characters have very strong recoveries. He takes out Isabel with the back air. Oh my goodness. And Team Arsenal wins this, but a very close match. For sure. Wow. A great job from uh, both teams. I mean, great job from Wendy. She did very well despite her average. I think. I, I think. Uh, what, uh, I think Super Bash Sisters found something that. Uh, to really help her. Uh, Wolf uh, did really well for Arsenal. Uh, and, I mean, Rob was so clutch taking it against uh, one of the strongest characters in the league. I think Arsenal, I mean, I think Arsenal can't help but be happy of Rob's performance here. Especially after Diddy Kong got killed before he could use that second final smash. So, um, yeah, great job to both teams. A uh, very close match. Uh, congrats to Team Arsenal, and let's move on to match four. So match four is Third Wheels versus Team Mystic. Um, this is pretty big. Both of these teams are 0-3. Uh, Third Wheels have 12 KO as well. Mystic only has uh, 9. Uh, but, um... Is that right? Did I write that down right? I did. They have 11. Um, so yeah, these are both very close teams. Uh, and uh, one of these teams is walking out of here uh, no longer winless, and one of these teams is walking out of here 0-4. Oh, um, third wheels have benched Richter. Uh, Richter is currently uh, not amazing. Right, uh, yeah, Richter is their second worst, uh, 72 average damage. And Mystic has benched... Uh, Rosalina. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, Rosalina's been their worst by a pretty big margin. 69 average damage. So, I mean, it's tough because neither of these teams have been, like, unworkable. Like, these teams all have had really good characters on them with really good performances. They just haven't been able to close anything out. And I'm not, I'm not sure what's up with that. Uh, but, um... Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Third Wheels versus... Oh. Third Wheels versus Team Mystic. Don't worry about that. That's just Mario. He comes in sometimes. So, we're starting off with 
Sonic versus Corrin. Sonic is running Tank Style, Happy Mask Salesman, Rock Mario Beat. Mystic is running Corrin. Corrin is running Demon Style, Golgan Halberd. Um, I think Corrin wins this matchup. Corrin has a 109 average damage. Uh, Sonic has an 86 average damage. So just keeping that in mind. And we're on Third Wheel's home map, which is King of Fighters Stadium. Yeah, um, I mean, she's got Sonic up to 42%, but he started with 30, and he's, with that homing attack, those kicks, oh my goodness. Okay, so let's, uh, let's evaluate, oh, the spin dash, taking Corrin up to 41%. Uh, Corrin needs to have an answer for Sonic speed. She's getting those up airs, she connects with the stun, but she doesn't follow up on it. I mean, that's the thing with Corrin, this game, this game, she... Kind of lost a lot of her good follow-ups from Smash 4, especially with her pin stuff. But, um, uh, regardless, uh, so Sonic is, uh, so Sonic is in, um, I mean, he's not a terrible character, honestly. He's been doing solidly despite his 86 average. It's just kind of hard when you when you start with uh when you start with Happy Mask Salesman and you're not the heaviest character ever. Oh, but he takes out Corrin. Wow. I mean, he's at 115, but still. And in comes Ness, running Ness's father, uh, Psyduck, and Tank Style. So um, if he can hit Sonic for these next few seconds, he can do very strong damage. But Sonic is really fast. Sonic is really evasive. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Ness's father runs out soon and he doesn't do much to Sonic. I feel like it's only got a couple seconds. Yeah, it's gone. And he's only got Sonic up to 135. <gasps> wow, okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, it's pretty much an even game right now. Sephiroth running uh, Brickwall style Meloetta Golgan. Uh, Ness's average is um, 167. Uh, Sephiroth's average is 134. So Ness is overall a better character. But in this matchup, I'm not entirely so sure, because uh, Ness lost his Ness's father. Uh, Sephiroth uh, has his healing. So I'm not sure Ness will be able to do the consistent damage out, but to keep up with Sephiroth, he's got the, uh, he's got the bubbles on him. Uh, but, okay. Is that how that works? Is that how that works? If you grab him, it just cancels the bubbles? I didn't know about that, but there you go. We're on Mystic's home map, which is Yodel. Uh, yes, their home map is Yodeling and Metal Hill. Y you, you were correct. The, uh, the, the, that was, those were the correct words I wanted to say. Their home map is Yodeling and Metal Hill. And, um, <laughs> and Ness is taken out. Sephiroth only at 46%. In comes Zelda, uh, the ringer of Mystic, uh, currently running with uh, 213 average damage. Uh, she's got those bubbles around her. I could see them doing pretty solid damage, yeah. She wasn't able to follow up on the knight because of it. And <laughs> Sephiroth charging up his neutral B and getting punished for it. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> Zelda connecting with that sweet spot, taking out Sephiroth, she just deals such massive damage. Strategist style Soren wheezing Shine Sprite, so uh, the Soren boosted the power of that kick, which is why uh, she was able to take Sephiroth out. Uh, so handily. And in comes Bayonetta, a forgetful style Halberd Majora's Mask. Uh, currently the lowest averaging damage of, uh, lowest averaging ca character of Third Wheels. Um, I think she's more or less past it though? Yeah, she's past her average. Her average was 47 and she seems to have gotten above that. Uh, we'll see if she's able to take out, uh, Zelda here. Because, uh, Third Wheels uh, definitely need to get through Zelda if they want to stay in this. Uh, but um, on the flip side, Zelda needs to do as much as possible if Mystic wants to stay with this. Uh, after her is uh, Shulk, who hasn't been amazing, and Hero, who's been, uh, you know, he's been Hero, he's been fine, but um, he, he's not. He's, like, Zelda's kind of the one-man band of this. Uh, of this team right now, so she needs to take out Bayonetta. Connects to that final smash, but does not take her out. Only brings her up to 
Oof, and Bayonetta takes out Zelda, and this is going to be a struggle for um, Team Mystic, but Shulk is in on a new build, Brickwall style Sothis. And that can be pretty dangerous, because no damage plus Sothis can often mean no damage twice. But Shulk does have uh, tools to boost his damage, so that could be what uh, Mystic is relying on here. Uh, he's also facing off against a Halberd character with Majora's Mask. I'm not... This is going to be a slow damage output from Shulk, unless he uh, really takes use of Buster Art. Smash Art! Okay, I think Smash Art should work here. Is he going to hit with a Smash Attack? Nope. And nope. Yeah, that's the thing. Smash Attack... Smash Art... I mean, the Arts, in general, kind of have their times lowered, but especially Smash Art, I believe. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so they're, they're just kind of more temporary buffs than sort of a true mode shift. But on the flip side, if he can connect with these, uh... If he can connect with this Smash Art, then, uh... No, he just isn't getting the kill. And that's really tough for Mystic. They need to get this kill on Bayonetta. I mean, they need to have Shulk still around for Joker. To absorb that, uh... To absorb that Ender Dragon, at least. If nothing else. And, uh, meanwhile, Bayonetta has well passed her average. Uh, Shulk finally going to Buster Eye, which means he can get some damage on the board. Uh, Bayonetta with her final smash! Oh no! She hit, she hit a move, that's more than she normally does. Uh, but Shulk manages to shield most of it, which means he won't... wasn't going to go above 100, which means he didn't get that... <gasps> Oh no, that's so bad for Mystic! That is so bad for Mystic. Losing Shulk right as he hits 100. I mean, Hero's been whacking way more this season, and I don't know why. But, um, yeah, I think that's it for Mystic. I think Threadwheels is picking up their first win. I, I mean, Hero's fine, but I don't think he can get through. Uh, two people, one of whom has a uh, gold Mario, and the other has an uh, Ender Dragon. Like, he, he's, he's struggling. He's taking a lot of damage from Hero, and um, he's already at uh, over 60%. So, talking about the builds, Hero's running for Guthful Style, Balrog, Grief Murray, Pet, uh, Zapfish. Uh, Hero is running. I just said the Hero is running. Uh, Joker is running Boulder Style and Ender Dragon, uh, which is currently just Boulder Style. So Hero, he's sort of all-around damage boost, sort of mostly a boost to his special moves. Uh, Sizzle did not uh, connect. <laughs> and now Arsene on deck takes out Hero. Yep. And that is a uh, rough for Team Mystic, not even bringing it to, to the last character. Congrats to Third Wheels for picking up their first win. Uh, Team Mystic, I don't know. I mean, Corrin did fine. She took she took out she took Sonic up to high damage. Ness, he took out Sephiroth. I mean, he took he took out Sonic. Uh, honestly, he didn't do that great against Sephiroth. Zelda was a solid. Uh, Shulk did good damage to Bayonetta. Honestly, I don't know what to say here. You even had your weakest character benched. Um, so yeah, uh, props to Third Wheels. Everyone here seemed to be working pretty well. Um, yeah. Uh, on to the next match. So match five is the Beefcakes versus Team Pint Size. Uh, the Beefcakes, 3-0, and oh, and that's a dominant 3-0. Oh. They have not used... Little Mac's been in the lineup every week. They have not needed him a single week. He has not shown up. And most of those weeks have been weeks without their fourth member, too. Uh, meanwhile, Pint Size, honestly, just consistent all around. Killager's been on point. Ice Climbers have been on point. Kirby's been on point. Um, they, uh, Beefcakes have benched, a uh, Snake, which is probably good for Pint Size. Uh, Pint Size has benched, 
Uh, Young Link, who's what, who's uh, currently their worst member, so... Uh, their Pine Says is going in with their strongest lineup against uh, one of Beefcake's weaker lineups. I'm not so sure. So, um, just a little peek behind the curtain. Uh, Pine Size has no active supporters. Uh, so the way... Like, because just sort of picking, like, builds and then doing a random lineup each time uh, wouldn't... Uh, would kind of be put uh, supporterless teams at a huge disadvantage because it would mean uh, their top characters keep getting benched. And it would mean you never get to use boosts and, and stuff, so... Uh, what I do is I have like a flowchart based off of like uh, what 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 the team currently is like what you know what their last bench is what their averages are what their uh, what what the opponents' averages are uh, what their opponents' latest bench was uh, that sort of thing and like legitimately like I went down the flowchart for pint size and like right like in the cell right next to it is go to Funky's Shack and get Kazuya. Uh, so like, like, ba basically like, like Pine Size is a 2-1 team, Beefcakes is a 3-0 team, like these teams are close together, if Pine Size was a little worse, that Pine Size had a little worse characters, I, I would have had them go get Kazuya, but the flowchart didn't say it, so I wasn't uh, about to go against that, and uh, we'll, we'll see if that's a, we'll see if that's necessarily a mistake for, uh, Mr. Flowchart. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, the Beefcakes versus Team Pint Size. So we're starting off with Zero Suit Samus versus Villager. Zero Suit Samus is running Demon Style Geese Howard. Villager is running Strategist Style Meloetta and Shine Sprite. So, um, yeah, uh, Zero Suit Samus, I mean, she hasn't averaged that well. Uh, she's kind of at 55 average damage, uh, which is, I mean, she was a starter in the we weeks, week she was in. It's only been one week. Uh, but, um, we know she can do great things in the preseason. She took out two characters on her own just with her final smash. And not not even hitting with any of her other attacks. So, if you're a pint size and you're a relatively light team, you've got to be careful around Zero Suit Samus. And she's already at 80%. Uh, Killager, of course, Strategist Style, Malawada, uh, Shine Sprite. Oh, here we go. Will this kill? It does not kill, but the second one might. Uh, real quick, Killager at 209 average damage. Uh, this is the best on pint size right now. And, uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, oh, dragging him to the top. That's death. And as uh, your beefcakes have the lead. Uh, are we going to, uh, are we going to see Ice Climbers take out Zero Suit Samus? Ice Climbers have a demon style Golgan and Halberd. And... They do take out Zero Suit Samus. In comes Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong running Forgetful Style Sothis. Uh, Ice Climber is 127 average damage, pretty respectable. Donkey Kong, 229 big ones. So, uh, you gotta be careful with this guy. He's one of the, he's honestly the primary reason Beefcakes have been getting so many wins. It's just, if Donkey Kong gets two KOs, Ganondorf gets two KOs, and that's really just it. Uh, but Ice Climbers have managed to bring Donkey Kong up to uh, about 100%. If they take Donkey Kong out, uh, that will be huge for Pine Size. Uh, like, I mean, it'll take, uh, have taken some of their strongest characters to do it. Uh, we're going to kill this Pokemon League. Oh, okay, that didn't take out Nana, which is a... Oh man, they are having trouble getting on stage, which is a problem. Uh, they really want to. Oh, they take out Donkey Kong before his Sothis activates. That is huge for Beefcakes. Even if Ice Climbers die right now, like, oh, but just Nana dies. Uh, that's that's a uh, that's fine. But 
but oh, <laughs> never mind. That is absolutely death for Popo. But um, yeah, I, I mean that's like it's an even match, but like lo losing Donkey Kong, who's been their top character, is such a huge deal. Uh, so this is probably the most winnable uh, we've seen a match against Beefcakes this season. Uh, why did you do that? Olimar up B in neutral. Okay. Uh, Olimar is running Bigby style Gold Mario. Ganondorf is running Gravity style Meloetta Shedinja. Olimar is having trouble getting any damage onto Ganondorf. You'd think he could uh, do pretty well with his Pikmin, just sort of uh, uh, chip damage over time, but that's kind of the thing. Is that Meloetta, you heal through chip damage. And what is a. Uh, Yeah, it's it's like uh, Ganondor just isn't taking damage from Olimar. He's hitting away the Pikmin too effectively, and um, the Gold Mario isn't uh, so much an effect against him uh, because of his uh, because of his uh, strong singular hit moves. It's not like he's a multi-hit character who really uh, gets countered hard by a Gold Mario. Uh, Olimar at a hundred percent. Uh, this is this is really tough. I mean, he can possibly survive to his final smash. He's already at 114, though. I, I really don't know. Ganondorf is uh, Ganondorf's at 192 average damage. Oh, that didn't take anyone out, but it could have. And uh, uh, on Pine Sizes and Olimar's at 119 average damage. So these are uh, Ganondorf's definitely. Uh, the higher ranked character, but Olimar is not no slouch, so... Oh, he, he uses his final smash. Will this connect? It does! He takes out Ganondorf at 60! And in comes Krom. I mean, this is so close, uh, but this is the closest uh, anyone's... I mean, this is the closest anyone's had to taking a game off, off Beefcakes this season. Krom is running strategist-style Halibird goal again. Kirby is running tank style, wheezing Victini, Reaper, and Repat. <laughs> and, um. Yeah, uh. Uh, Krom. Uh, doing great damage with his side B and then uh, following it up with a um, down tilt, I believe. And right now, they're just sort of staying away from each other. Kirby uh, perhaps wants to try and bait Krom off stage a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was, uh the case, because Krom is uh, notoriously uh, bad at recovery. So if uh, if Kirby can manage to get a down air on Krom... Oh, but Kirby's already at 103 thanks to that up B. <gasps> he connects with a rock, taking Krom up to 75. And Kirby is out. That is... I, I don't think that that's uh, great for Pine Size. Kirby's was one of their ringers, and in comes uh, Inkling, who hasn't been performing great. <gasps> There goes Krom! She pushed him off stage with the Ender Dragon! Inkling running Ender Forgetful Style, Ender Dragon, Little Mac. His first showing of the season. Uh, Big B Style, Mithra Might. I, are we going to see a drop of the only other... Are we going to have no more lossless teams? Uh, Little Mac is a, has a zero average damage, because he has not shown up yet. Inkling has a 50 average damage, the second lowest on Team Pine Size. Um, this this could be a uh, this this could be a struggle, but we just don't know what Little Mac is capable of in in uh, season three. He's got Inkling up to 63 percent. That's honestly kill percent. Like honestly, she could she could get hit by an up smash and get taken out right now, but she connects the grab. Manages to get a little ink on uh, Little Mac. Uh, down airs him, but that does not take him out. He's getting kind of close to his uh, KO punch. She's at 91%, and she's almost out of ink. She, she's trying to avoid getting in too close to Little Mac, but the problem is uh, she needs to charge up her ink for that to be an effective strategy. She's hit off the stage and taken out, and Beefcakes are 4-0. 
Wow, but absolutely incredible from Pine Size, who took this uh, incredibly close. Uh, taking out Donkey Kong quickly, taking out Ganondorf relatively quickly. Uh, this was a uh, this was a hard fought game from Pine Size, uh, the closest game against Beefcakes yet. And with Beefcakes, uh, if you're Beefcakes, there is the question of who can stop you. Like now we see that uh, even if you get past Ganondorf, Krom and Little Mac aren't slouches. So, what are teams gonna do? next week. That, that is a question. But um, congrats to both teams. Uh, on to the final match of the week. And now we have match six, Team Villain versus the Athlete. So uh, Team Villain uh, are currently 2-1, is that correct? Uh, yeah, they're 2-1 with 11 KOs, and the athletes are 2-1 with 12 KOs, so these are pretty much even teams. Uh, Team Villain has benched uh, Dark Samus, uh, who is currently uh, their worst character. And the athletes have benched Min Min, who is currently... Um, Who's currently their second best, actually, 149 average damage. Uh, interesting uh, choice there, but we'll see how it plays out. Um, yeah, it'll be, inter it'll be interesting. Both of these teams have uh, some really, really strong characters. Both of these teams have characters who haven't uh, looked too amazing. Uh, I'll, I'll be curious to see how it uh, goes. Uh, these, these aren't uh, particularly... Like this, none of these are teams with uh, all average fighters. These are teams with a lot of disparity, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. So, Team Villain versus the Athletes. So we're starting off with Mewtwo versus Wario. Mewtwo is running Gravity Style, Weezing Meltank. Wario is running Polar Style, Polar Bear, and Might. Um, right now, uh, it's pretty uh, back and forth start. They both managed to deal 20 damage to each other. Uh, we're on here on Mementos, which is what was uh, picked for a villain's home map. Uh, Wario choosing to do the up smash and neutral from a mile away. And uh, Mewtwo having trouble uh, getting much uh, to stick on to Wario. He's, he's somewhat of a... I mean, he's got stuff like his neutral air and stuff, where he kind of needs combos. Oh my goodness, he got... <laughs> well, that evened it up. Did you just throw that into the ground? Anyway, um, Mewtwo uh, constantly making us question his intelligence as uh, Wario manages to get him up to 80%. Wario has 132 average damage, nothing to scoff at. Uh, Mewtwo has 40 average damage, uh, which isn't amazing. Uh, incredibly bad, in fact. Uh, but uh, they seem to be keeping it pretty even so far. Oof, that bite. Uh, <laughs> I, why did they make it heal in this game? I just don't... It was already one of the best command grabs in the game. I don't know why they made bite heal. But there you go, I guess. And, uh... Yeah, this is just totally neck and neck. And I think... Mewtwo's gonna get his final smash first, which will potentially decide it. He also just has some better kill moves in general. Well... You know, I don't know. Oh, okay, that's gonna kill. But Wario did have a really good kill move on deck right there, so. There you go. And in comes Terry running tank style gold Mario. 
Uh, Terry has been a solid character, I think. 145 average damage. Also, I don't know why I said... Did I say Minmin was their best? I, I meant Minmin was their second best. I meant except for me, Brawler. Um, so let let's... Uh, let's uh, move on and talk about Bowser, who's running Big Beast Metal Polar Bear Rock Mario. Um, yeah, these guys are gonna um, just sort of smack each other for a while. They're both armor characters, so uh, eventually one of them will lose their armor. I think that's gonna be uh, Terry who's gonna go first, because uh, he's just the lighter character and he doesn't have free armor. But, um,. I mean, they're just sort of just two really buff guys just standing across from each other in, in a slap fight. J just like all my dreams. Oh, and there goes Terry before he can get the go meter. And in comes Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt running Brickwall style, Meloetta, and Shedinja. Uh, Duck Hunt, 62 average damage. Worst member of the team right now, so... Uh, they're definitely hoping they can uh, get something working with Duck Hunt. Meanwhile, Bowser is doing incredibly well for Team Villain. Uh, he's he is kind of the best member of the team, the only one who's uh, really worked every single week. And um, yeah, and right now, I mean, here's the thing with Duck Hunt's healing, ba Bowser's damage isn't uh, necessarily meaning as much. Bowser is still dealing a lot of good hits. Oh, okay. That was an interesting down B. And yeah, I think... Uh, oh wait. Oh wait. I, I just realized Bowser does have his final smash. <laughs> um, well, I don't think this will kill. It's too, way too early. Or you can just go through the glass. That sells works. You can just go through the glass. And now we have a uh, Mii Brawler running Demon Style Hellbird and Majora's Mask. And oof, there goes Bowser through the walls, and now we're back in Mementos. And Team Villain still has a lead. Uh, Piranha Plant running Tank Style, Great Fairy, Heavy Mask Salesman. But if anyone can bring it back to an even game for uh, athletes, it's gonna be Me Brawler. Uh, Me Brawler with an average damage of 298, which is almost gold on its own. So, um,. I, I mean, he, he needs to, uh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, the poison cloud. Holy cow. Piranha Plant's tank style, great fairy, happy mask salesman. I guess the happy mask salesman is what's doing that, but still. Uh, we did get the great fairy to activate on Piranha Plant, so all this damage is going to stick. And I can definitely see uh, me Brawler taking this out in a couple hits, but he's taking way too much damage for athletes to be comfortable with. Like, athletes need someone who can, uh, who can get through two characters so that they can get through Ridley fairly easily. I mean, like, they're not necessarily screwed if, uh, if it's just me, Gunner, versus the world, but... Yeah, here's where we are. And there goes Piranha Plant, me, Gunner, running strategist-style Roll Casquette, Shine Sprite, and Weezing. So, a very special move span, and just, uh, projectile moves in general, which is all of them. And Meta Knight is running Forgetful Style, Meloetta, and Tails. Uh, Meta Knight is, uh, hasn't been great. Uh, Meta Knight's been 68 average damage, so not incredible. Though I will say that uh, B Gunner's been 90 average damage, which isn't amazing either. So, um, interesting to see how this goes. And, uh, oof, me, Garner, connecting with that grenade. Uh, it feels like Meta Knight isn't connecting with that many up specials, which is a shame because that's kind of part of what he's built for, is to hit with those up specials and use those for early uh, kills off the top. But we're going back to King of Fighters Stadium. Uh, no places to fall off here, which is potentially an advantage for uh, me, Gunner. Meta Knight's almost at his final smash, which will probably kill if it connects, so me, Gunner definitely wants to... There we go. That's exactly what he wanted, and in comes Ridley, Ridley running Demon Style, Numa, and Shine Sprite. Uh, so Ridley, uh, one of the few characters to try out Numa this season. Uh, Numa is an interesting 
uh, spirit. It's sort of like a weaker, well, it's kind of a better Great Fairy because sure it only heals you by 30%, but it activates at 80, which means it has a higher chance of activating. And uh, of course it turns you metal as well. Uh, oh, uh, me Gunner has that Final Smash on deck. If she connects with it, I think this kill. No, it doesn't kill. Wow, and um, yeah, I really think. Oh my goodness, there goes Ridley. And um, the athletes take it uh, as soon as the game remembers what Sans looks like. You all know him, right? He's got he's got this. It's a circle. There we go. And yeah, a uh, great win from Team Villain. Uh, me, Gunner, I don't think the second worst on the team anymore. Uh, looking at the performances, uh, Bowser was good as always. Uh, Piranha Plant was very strong, taking out me, Brawler, and... And Mewtwo was, uh, managed to get a very solid early lead for, uh, for Team Villain. But, um... But, but, um, yeah, I mean, Meta Knight really struggled against uh, Me Gunner, got taken out pretty quickly. Uh, Ridley got taken out really quickly with that final smash, at, uh, racking up a lot of damage. Uh, Duck Hunt uh, wasn't the best. I was able to survive, but he got taken out by uh, Bowser's final smash. But, you know, overall, uh, strong stuff from both teams. Managed to bring it down to last stock, which is... Uh, better than some uh, some teams tonight, and uh, yeah, that is it for week four. Uh, some interesting stuff. Uh, we currently have a 104 team and 140 team, so it'll be interesting to see when uh, those teams uh, manage to get their first win and first loss, respectively. Otherwise, the league seems to be pretty even right now, so. Uh, that's, uh, pretty exciting. Uh, that's all for this week. Bye, everyone!